night. He does his poker thing, hand games, and I'm just wandering the arbor and all that stuff. Following morning, he says, hey, Rick, come on. Let's go for a little walk. Where? Well, I'll show you. So I go for a walk with him. We walk past the front of the school. It was still standing at that time. And when, as we were walking past, he's talking about different things going on that had taken place inside the school, stuff like that. We walk past the school, we walk past the old teachers that are still, some of them are still standing there. I actually took my wife and my uh, son there last summer. So as we're walking past, he's telling these buildings, he says, yeah, these where the teachers used to live and all this stuff. And, you know, he says, we were never allowed to come up here. He says, maybe the girls were, but the boys, we were never allowed to be up there. So we walked past, and then we walked through this gate. And out in this gate was this large graveyard. As he keeps walking, I'm following him, eh? Yes, go walk. I'm walking with him. I get there, and then he stops, and he turns around and he says, have a look around you, son. So I look. I'm looking at all these crosses. He says, all these kids are on this spot. I buried them. He says, some of them? They're Eskimo, Inyo. They were brought from the north. They came down to the Kamsel Hospital. Some of them died there. And because they didn't, they didn't know where to send those kids, they sent them to us. And a lot of times, he says, a lot of the kids, when we put them in, he says, I could see their faces. Like the shroud had come off. He says, so I had to recover the kids. And uh, as a 15-year-old boy, that's a tough one. I was 15 when he did that, and I thought, you know, in hindsight, I think, holy shoot, I was the same age as he was when he ran away from the residential school for the last time. The first time he ran away, he went back to the res. Three weeks, two and, Tim and two of his cousins went back to the res. RCMP came to pick him up, they took him back to the school, and then the, third, the second time that he ran away, he asked his cousins again, he says, do you guys want to come with me? This is more. We're going to stay. Well, they stayed. They did eventually leave on their own two feet, of course. Anyway, the old man, he went west and he stayed west. He came here to Vancouver. He worked in this area for 15 plus years. He flew up into the Haida Gwaii and he talked about all the trees that he climbed when he was working up there. He was what they called, at that time, he said, I was a high rigger. And I said, what the heck's a high rigger? Well, he explained it, told me about, well, I used to climb to the top of these trees. I'd knock the tops off. I look, gosh, that's a hell of a long way up. And he says, well, yeah, it's a long way up there. <laughs> and then I think about this one story he told me. He says, yeah, one day I went to town, went to Vancouver. I was there partying it up for a week. And on my, when I was there, I bought this really, really nice watch. And he was quite proud of this watch when he went up into camp. And like a fool, he kept it on. Climbed up to the top of the first tree. And that was the last time he saw his watch. Because he says, after I knocked it off, one of the branches caught my wrist. He says, and I could see my watch going down. It exploded. <laughs> and he just says, don't buy anything expensive, son. It's not, and that's a lesson. Just don't buy expensive stuff. Because sooner or later, you lose it or it breaks. And what have you got left? Maki way, nothing. So today, I think about my kids. Anything and everything that I do is for my children. Like, it's all about them. The Creator put us here for that, to look after our children. To me, it's always identity. Knowing yourself. Language is really, really important, people. Yes, we're, you, we're borrowing the colonizer's language here, the two official languages. Why are they the official languages, I ask myself every day as an educator. That's not their damn land. This is our land. Why do we have to use theirs? But for the sake of, I guess, um, accommodating. And why are we so darn accommodating? Ixiwatsiak. Because we are generous and we are kind as a people. Not just the Crees, but all of us, all of our people were kind. We've shared and we've shared and we continue to share. Anyway, I think my time is done. My wife is saying, patting my back, get off the stage, Rick. Oh, before I leave stage, 
Wapskusni Sekasut. My son's name is White Rock. And, the, and we're not just talking about any rock. We're talking about a rock that has been to a sweat and then has been taken to the Sundance or is the one that sits at the Sundance. Any of you who've ever been to a Sundance, you'll remember on the south side of the pole, you'll see a little rock about this big, generally, and all those prints that, sitting on, that are sitting under it. Yokwawa, Wapskusni, that's what that is, that rock that sits on top of everything and looks after all of ceremony. That is my son's name, Wapskusni. But for now, we use Noah Buffalo Jackson, especially in court proceedings. Anyway, I thank you for your time. I appreciate that. On behalf, on behalf of all of us on this, I'm just going to ask you to stay for just a few more moments. Um, you know, our elders are going, are going are, we're going to blanket all of you. On behalf of all of us on the Assembly of First Nations, First Nations across this country, to each and every one of you for doing this for all of us and stepping forward and putting your names down to, to, to fight for us, to fight for your rights and to, to make sure that you to make life better for the ones that are coming up. We thank you, but we will blanket you and, we, and our elders will do a ceremony for you. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, Elder Fiddler, for, for um, your ceremony and to Elder Ernie Daniels for doing this. So on behalf of all First Nations, we gift you and we lift you up and we honor you. Thank you. Miigwech. Thank you, everybody. And just in closing, I, I, I want to just, I promised um, NARC that they can have a, just one moment of your time and then that'll be, that'll be it for us. Is um, Chief Bobby Narcisse here? Kishtine. Elvis is in the building. <laughs> he really is Elvis in Ontario. He, he dresses as Elvis and he does an Elvis show and that's my brother. <laughs> uh, where is Chief Chief Pratt? 
I, I thank these boys for their work during all of this as well. We always all try to work together and push each other. We all need each other. Yeah. Oh. All right. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Bonjour, <laughs> Kenwick uh, my name is uh, Bobby Narcisse. I'm a Deputy Grand Chief of uh, Anishinaabeaski Nation. And it's uh, great to be here uh, to address you all. I know it's uh, lunchtime, but uh, I'll keep my remarks uh, uh, very uh, quick here. Uh, thank you, uh, Regional Chief uh, Woodhouse. Uh, the National Assembly of Remote Communities was created as part of a historical first uh, for remote communities uh, across this country. As Deputy Grand Chief of Anishinaabeaski Nation that represents uh, Treaty 5 and Treaty 9 communities in, uh, in Northern Ontario, uh, we, I have the responsibility of child welfare uh, portfolio, uh, and I have had the honor of working closely with uh, Vice Chief Pratt uh, from FSIN. He's been a tireless partner uh, in the early successes of the uh, National Assembly of Remote Communities. So uh, National Assembly of Remote Communities is, well, basically says NARC, uh, so if there's narcs in the building here. I was going to call it the National Assembly of Remote Communities Implementing Social Services Equity, NARCIS, but uh, that would have been too narcissistic of me to, to do that. But uh, the challenges in the remote north, as you know, uh, are very unique and requires unique solutions. You know, like a dollar in uh, you know, Vancouver is different than a dollar in Attawapiskat or Bearskin Lake. You know, so and why are our First Nations continually being discriminated uh, with uh, lack of needs-based funding? So that's basically where we are coming at this, working with uh, uh, Regional Chief Woodhouse and National Chief Archibald at the AFN to ensure that our remote communities' voices are also heard and there's a process for our remote communities. And there's various degrees of remoteness. We have fly-in communities, we have communities that are you know, rely on like winter roads, and uh, you know the and the and the challenges faced by our remote communities are so unique. They require unique community-based solutions, and that's why we organize the uh, National Assembly of Remote Communities to ensure that our remote communities do have a voice, especially within this child and family services settlement. What does that mean to our children in the remote north that still have a severe uh, lack of access to? reasonable resources like drinking water, like housing, like the overcrowdedness of our housing. And one of the reasons why our children are going into care is the fact that there needs to be certain investments made at the, uh, at the uh, community level, especially within our remote communities. And uh, within the Anishinaabeaski Nation Treaty 9, Treaty 5 territory, we have like 34 fly-in communities that have you know, various challenges. And we want to ensure that even this compensation package also ensures that there is going to be supports uh, for our, uh, our remote uh, communities uh, in this regard. And I'd like to really uh, acknowledge uh, the initial uh, signers of uh, NARC to, to move this. And I want to make sure that uh, to let all the chiefs and everybody in, in assembly know that this is not in competition with, with what's happening with the uh, uh, class action suit or at the CHRT, but in collaboration to ensure uh, that uh, our, uh, our priorities within the remote north is also uh, uh, adhered to. We have to identify what we have, what we need, and what we want in terms of uh, this compensation package to ensure that is, uh, there's a lot of safety mechanisms put in place for the benefit of our remote communities, which access issues are always uh, uh, paramount in our areas. So I'd like to also acknowledge uh, uh, the Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations, uh, the Manitoba Kiwetanao Okimakanak, the MKO, uh, also uh, within the uh, uh, Assembly of First Nations Northwest Territories as well, who have uh, had um, uh, an interest also in, in joining NARC as well in terms of all the important work that's, uh, that's happening as well. So uh, very, I'm just going to um, close off by saying that, uh, so we are bringing like uh, uh, some research to the, the work that's happening, especially with the compensation and the uh, First Nations Child and Family Services reform, uh, the, the $40 billion that was, uh, that was announced. But we're looking at it as like bringing in like a study of remoteness quotient, it's called. It's a remoteness quotient, RQ. It's an empirical exercise uh, 
identifying the costs of actually delivering child and family services in the remote north. Like I said, a dollar is different in the south than it is in the north. And that's the work that we want to embark on and work with all of our First Nation communities and moving ahead. And uh, so we're looking forward to this work happening. Uh, we have resources to do NARC uh, forums such as this, identifying our pathway forward and looking at ways to really resource our remote communities uh, to ensure that this uh, work uh, goes through as well. Uh, I'd like to also identify uh, Vice Chief Pratt. Is, uh, is, is Vice Chief Pratt? Oh, he was here, but anyways. Um, I'd just also like to close off too that uh, we have um, we have a uh, luncheon actually right now uh, at the uh, Fairmount uh, waterfront. Uh, if you're interested in uh, uh, in the NARC work, uh, we're hosting a luncheon over there, so we welcome all you all. Uh, we'll have uh, click sandwiches and um, and wiener soup and stuff like that. So uh, remote uh, diet that we have. In this. But with that, I'd like to thank you all for giving us this time to present on NARC, and uh, thank you. Thank you to our remote communities, and I just, I told you, I told you one minute. <laughs> thank you guys, We're, that's, that's, that's it first. I know there's lots of questions, and I'll, I'll give it back to the chairs now. And if Diane's around, if you could just stay for a moment. So, before we head out to lunch, uh, I see that we have a speaker on microphone too. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Councillor Shorting, Little Saskatchewan First Nation. Greetings from Manitoba Treaty 2 territory. I'm just uh, wanting to uh, uh, make mention here a couple of items. I'm a former child abuse investigator for uh, child welfare. Mm -hmm. And I left that agency now uh, 11 years ago. Far too many times we're trusting our children with immigrants that moved to this country of Canada. And we're harder on our own people to license these homes. Our grandmothers, our aunties, our uncles. Homes that could be beneficial in our communities. And far too many times I've seen it firsthand. These immigrants that are coming to our country of Canada, they get licensed homes. We're paying for their mortgages, their vehicles, and yet we're harder on our own people to license our own homes. But that's not the, one of the reasons I came up here was also in the area of education. Our youth that are leaving our communities. They're leaving our communities at an alarming rate and they're unsuccessful in their endeavors in the area of education due to the fact that they're still following the 1970 rates in education. Everything around us in this country, inflation is going up. There's no way that you can find any rental units for $675 today, let alone to live alone and, and feed yourself from that $675. And also the uh, last comment I want to make is the infringing the rights of our indigenous women. Our women's rights are continued to be infringed upon. When our women bear a child and they have a child and they don't report or, re or report uh, who the father is, when they have that child, and that child is automatically labeled as a C2L2 in the area of membership, our treaty rights as we know it today will no longer exist if we continue the path of this government continuing in the area of membership. We need to take control, AFN, of our own membership, of our youth, our children that are being born So let's, let's uh, formalize something here, leaders. It's our responsibility. It's our future is at stake as Aboriginal people in the treaty rights area. Let's, let's take control of our own membership here. Never mind Indigenous Services Canada. They lied, lied to us one too many times. Thank you. Those are my comments. Have a nice day.
Before we end this uh, item on our agenda, we do have Vice Chief Pratt who joined us. So for a short two minutes, we said? A one minute. A one minute he wants to go to lunch too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ma um, uh, Madam and Monsieur Chair. I'll be real quick. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, to all the chiefs, proxies, and delegates in the room. I know you have a very tight schedule. I just wanted to just, first of all, quickly uh, support what Deputy Grand Chief uh, Bobby Narcisse said in his presentation about the Northern Alliance of Remote Communities. We're so happy that uh, we're able to be a part of this uh, AIP process and get a table there for our Northern and Remote Communities. We know the issues are different when it comes to those northern and remote communities, and there's a specific need that falls out of line compared to what, where our other uh, communities are located because some are more uh, geographically located to urban centers and have easy access to services. Well, they don't have that in the northern or remote areas. So I uh, just want to say that we're working with them, the FSN, the Chiefs have mandated uh, NARC. <clears throat> Uh, NARC uh, is a, a term that uh, some people laugh at, but it, it does do important work. Uh, I did have to argue because uh, Deputy Grand Chief was trying to change it to where the acronym was Narcisse, and I said, I think we'd have a problem with the Chiefs, I told them on that. But um, we, we're, we're looking forward to, uh, to starting that work. We've begun it already. We're going to look work with MKO, uh, the uh, Treaty Number 8, the Northwest Territories, to ensure that uh, the northern remote needs are met as a part of this whole AIP process. I do also want to acknowledge Regional Chief uh, Woodhouse for her great work on the file uh, and pushing for this. It's been a long time coming, and uh, we want to make sure that our children, our most valuable treasure and resource, uh, get what uh, they deserve and also be able to provide those support to our families where it's so critically needed. So with that, Miigwech, thank you for giving me a couple minutes on the time. Looking forward to the rest of the discussion today. Thank you. Lalin, Vice Chief Pratt. So that brings us to a close. I just want to say uh, and recognize our speakers who shared their stories with us. The strength that that must take uh, is immense. Recognize everything you've done. Cindy Blackstock, you're a rock star. And just recognize our elders that were here. Not to forget the Hope for Wellness line. We do understand that these are matters that couldn't be difficult to deal with. So the Hope for Wellness line is 1-855-242. 3310, and they also have a chat line on hopeforwellness.ca. So I will turn it over to Wina for closing. Merci, thank you, merci Cédric, et merci uh, cette, uh, cette incroyable délégation et présentation. Merci à tout, tous ceux qui nous représentent et puis qui se battent pour la protection et la défense de nos droits, nos intérêts, nos jeunes, les prochaines générations. Merci beaucoup. Alors, euh, maintenant, j'ai quelques annonces à vous faire avant d'annoncer l'heure du lunch. Alors, voici les annonces. Premièrement, j'aimerais donner les résultats finaux de la, de la, de la, de la, de la pardon, du projet de résolution d'urgence 3. Oui, les résultats ont été présentés hier, mais simplement pour les reconfirmer. Et je vais demander, s'il vous plaît, de mettre à l'écran la... La, la diapositive sur la résolution, les résultats finaux de la résolution d'urgence 3 présentée hier. Alors, nous allons représenter les, euh, les résultats. Merci beaucoup. Alors, la résolution d'urgence qui a été adoptée hier, qui s'appelle, qui s'intitule « Délibération extraordinaire, suspension de la chef nationale je, », je souhaite rappeler que les résultats sont les suivants. 26 en soutien, 252 qui s'opposent, 44 abstentions. Alors, et évidemment, là, de toute évidence, ça, ces résultats-là comprennent les résultats présents dans la salle, en Zoom, au téléphone. Et évidemment, là, la, 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 le projet de résolution d'urgence a été adopté. Euh, maintenant, merci. Vous pouvez enlever la, la, la slide et félicitations aussi. Euh, Deuxième annonce à faire, les résultats finaux maintenant de la, du projet de résolution qui a été adopté, en fait, qui n'est plus un projet, le, la résolution numéro 4. Euh, J'aimerais d'abord, premièrement, vous reconfirmer que pour, la, que pour le quorum d'aujourd'hui, c'est de 106. Une résolution a besoin d'obtenir 60 des votes, tous les votes, on compte les pour, les contre, et on a besoin de 60 des votes pour. 
donc in favor, en soutien, pour adopter une résolution. Le quorum, c'est simplement pour euh, s'assurer qu'on est en droit de, faire, euh, de passer à une décision par, le, par les représentants inscrits. Alors, pour ce qui est des résultats finaux de la, de la, de la résolution numéro 4, qui inclut Zoom, la salle, le téléphone, 190 pour, 24 contre et 14 abstentions, alors 88 alors c'est adopté. Euh, le, le projet de résolution 4 qui s'appelle « Un cadre renouvelé fournissant une orientation stratégique et des mesures en vue d'un changement évolutif et positif ». Alors, félicitations pour votre résolution. Ensuite, je souhaite vous, vous informer que les projets de résolution d'urgence 1 avec les modifications le projet du, ce, ce projet de résolution d'urgence est disponible, je crois que vous le savez déjà, disponible sur la table, donc avec les modifications, la version en anglais. On, je crois comprendre qu'on travaille toujours sur la version en français, mais on n'attendra pas la, la finalisation de la traduction pour, pour adresser ce projet d'urgence. Alors, nous allons le traiter, première chose, en commençant, en revenant du dîner, puis il faut que vous sachiez que si vous souhaitez avoir le français, la traduction simultanée va offrir le français pour, euh, pour euh, le moment, alors euh, tout le monde pourra être bien servi et pouvoir adresser cette, ce projet de résolution. Ensuite, on ira au projet de résolution 2, s'il si, si, euh, y a lieu. Alors, euh, maintenant... Pour les commandites, merci, parce que c'est important, hein, une grande organisation comme on a ici, l'Assemblée générale annuelle, c'est énorme euh, et c'est extrêmement important de remercier nos sponsors, les commanditaires. J'aimerais d'abord commencer par remercier puis reconnaître la contribution apportée par Grand River Enterprises et RBC pour leur commandite pour la présente 43e Assemblée générale annuelle de l'Assemblée des Premières Nations. Nous souhaitons également remercier le National Assembly Remote Communities pour avoir généreusement offert le petit déjeuner d'hier. Merci beaucoup. Finalement, prenez note que le projet, les projets de résolution en retard, bien, le, le délai est terminé, c'était à midi aujourd'hui. Alors, terminé pour les projets de résolution en retard. Et maintenant... Nous allons, ah oui, je veux simplement vous dire qu'on va faire jouer le vidéo hier, il ne restait plus beaucoup de personnes, puis je crois que c'était très important, c'est une vidéo qui a été faite sur la délégation au Vatican, extrêmement important, extrêmement enrichissant à regarder, et euh, euh, une, une vidéo de qualité, alors euh, on va la faire jouer pendant l'heure du lunch, je pense que c'est important pour ceux qui n'auraient pas pu le voir et qui voudraient le voir, cela va jouer. Et j'annonce maintenant que nous allons suspendre pour un lunch, une, une, la pause du lunch d'une heure. Et je déclare que il est presque 13h10, 1h10 presque. Alors, nous allons reprendre à 2h10. Alors, 2.10 this afternoon, so 10 minutes past 2. On va reprendre l'agenda la, la, et on va poursuivre avec, comme je l'ai mentionné, avec le projet de résolution en retard numéro 1. C'est ce, le projet de résolution que, qui a été proposé euh, et coproposé, dont euh, Chief Len Amon euh, est, euh, est un des, euh, des proposeurs. Alors, merci beaucoup sur ce bon lunch. Merci beaucoup. <rire> à tantôt. of the school and children on May 27, 2021, when Pekan Sushwetmik announced that they had found the remains of 215 children from a former Kamloops Indian residential school in an unmarked grave residential school site.
people have suffered these oppressive acts and acts of genocide against us, which has resulted in residential schools and is the primary reason that this delegation is here now to address the Vatican, to address the Pope, so that he can hear the stories of survivors and hear the stories of those who are related to survivors and understanding the impacts that it's had upon our peoples. He said, if they recognize us as human beings, they're gonna to have to admit we have human rights. In terms of the relationships uh, with uh, Canadians and uh, the Catholic Church, I mean, they're central to this story. Tell the truth about our history, about what happened at residential schools, how Indigenous people suffered and were marginalized through the whole colonizing enterprise, to acknowledge our role and responsibility. People were taken away from their families and were taken away and gone to a residential school and were stripped off their language, their culture, uh, at the same time being abused. But I could hear children crying all the time, you know, when they're lined up and they're being hit. But I was so afraid. I believe that this offers uh, survivors uh, a real opportunity to turn the story around. What I'd like to uh, hear, the Pope has a true understanding and empathy for our people and the experiences they suffered. To bring that, that that true emotional that that hurt to the Pope to to relay that message. First Nations are resilient. We're here. You know, we're carrying the messages of hope and the messages of pain, the importance of him knowing our truths that we had brought forward collectively. And my life is where I'm at today because of these systems and what had happened to your people. And It's so much more than, than just that apology. The apology is one thing. It's the actions that are required. We'll hear from him something of uh, the steps forward. Chief Cabinet Stolarm often speaks about the day after the apology as the most important day. Bring that message across.